Hi everyone, welcome or welcome back to my little corner of the internet. It's been a little while and so I just want to kind of give you a little update and then we can dive into today's topic. If you don't care, just jump to this time. Okay, so last week I didn't upload any video. Well, technically I did, but it got blocked. Anyway, there was a combination of a few things that have led me to a conclusion on this end. So things were one i miscalculated the number of videos i needed <laughs> and so i only had one ready for next week uh, last week which would have been fine because i could just record another one but then it got blocked and i got really annoyed because it's like the fourth or fifth video that i've made uploaded and then it gets blocked and i can't unblock it unless i escalate the dispute and if that gets rejected i can get a copyright strike which puts my entire channel in jeopardy so i rather not challenge these things also like i don't care when a band decides that like i can't make money off of a reaction it's fair but just don't block the video just let it be <sighs> anyway it was really frustrating and it was just kind of the straw that broke the camel's back in terms of me getting kind of bored with making reactions because the bands i want to react to the views are really really low and then i end up only making reactions for like four bands and it's just getting kind of boring for me and not fun so i'm gonna take a little break from reactions and kind of go back to basics in a way except for this video this one is an outlier but basically i miss talking about movies and tv and other things so that's what i'm gonna go back to if you you're not interested it's fine you know it's been fun and i wish you all the best but if you're still curious stick around it should be fun i will reduce my videos though back to once a week because of that because those videos take longer to make and i don't have time anyway today's video is not movies or tv or a reaction it's me rambling about Linkin Park. Yay! I want to come in and join the party too. Let me start by stating a fact that is important, which is I love Linkin Park. Like many people my age, they were, you know, a formative band for me. They're one of my, have to quote, bands. Basically, if, for example, you say one thing, I'll immediately say, I don't know why, it doesn't even matter how hard you try, keep that in mind, you know, it, it's just how it goes. All of this to say that yes, they are a big part of my formative years, especially musically speaking. They are, I think objectively, one of the gateway bands for people to reach harder, heavier music. Hard, but not too hard, and it's not so, yeah, whatever, it's the Goldilocks effect. Also, I was supposed to see them live seven years ago. <laughs> I had tickets to see them. They were about to come to Japan to have a concert with 1OK Rock and I was so excited. And then one morning, seven years ago, I open my socials and see all of the cries and rest in peace of, well, for Chester Bennington. That was crushing but okay seven years have passed and they have come back they've announced a new singer a new drummer a new world a, a, a celebratory tour a new album and then an extensive world tour everything everywhere all at once superb here we go when i saw the picture of them with emily armstrong the new vocalist my first thought was clever girl it is such a smart move to get a female singer. The biggest hurdle when it comes to replacing a singer, especially an influential one such as Chester, it's it's the comparisons, right? Nobody can compare the image formed in a person's head. It's not necessarily even a, a vocal prowess issue, even though, you know, Chester's voice is iconic, it is in its own place, it is not one of a kind in terms of his aptitude. <coughs> uh, that, that was a funny place for my voice to break. But yeah, it's it's the whole package, right? It's the it's the persona, it's the emotions, it, it's the Chester. <laughs> so having a woman step up you immediately feel less like the band is trying to bring in a new dad instead of stepping into somebody else's shoes it's putting on new ones and that is 
very smart. I saw a lot of comments though that mentioned like they should have just started a new band and I really can't disagree with this statement more. <laughs> yes, Chester was the frontman and a major part of the band, but the new single that we will talk more extensively later really proves that he wasn't the whole band. They are still completely capable of having a Linkin Park sound without him. And that's the whole point. They should be able to continue making Linkin Park music even without Chester. Many bands have continued to make music after major lineup changes. There are some bands that don't even have any of their original founding members left and they continue to make music. A band at the end of the day is more than each individual within the band. It's a whole collective. That's why it's a band. Of course, it's not always the case, but of course, sometimes you have a member that is like a, a linchpin, uh, a crucial part of the band that without that member, the band no longer resembles itself. But those are fewer and farther in between that we might, than we might think. My take is that bands should be able to move on after a member's departure, be it if they left because they wanted to, or because they died. I think it's crucial. Now, I already mentioned the song a little bit, but I want to talk about it specifically because from the first note, also the name of the song is Emptiness Machine, which al already is very Linkin Parky. Linkin Parky, that's fun to say. From the first note, it is so clear it's a Linkin Park song. And not only that, but it's a good Linkin Park song. I genuinely love it. I've been listening to it all week. I've, I've been listening, basically. It, one, it's... If I'm not actively listening to it, it's stuck in my head. So I also think that Emily's voice really, really works with it. I think they made sure of that. They chose a singer that has this grittiness to her voice that is necessary for Linkin Park angst and, and they got that. I think that her voice really works. I think they made sure that her voice would work not only in like hiring her but when they were writing the song. It's it's in her pitch abilities, in her strength, in her prowess. Like they, they didn't make a Linkin Park song and then brought her in. She was very clearly part of it. I I haven't seen anything about the process of writing it, but that is my assumption from hearing the song. The song was built with her in mind. Having said that, I also did watch some of the live performance when they introduced her. So I want to talk about that as well. And the first thing I want to say is that I thought it was so smart of Mike to introduce the band the way that he did. Ending, you know, there's just saying like, I Mike, this is Emily, this is the drummer. Nobody's like, this is a new person. And then saying, and in the role of Chester Bennington tonight is all of you pointing to the fans. So smart, so smart. Another way of saying like, nobody's replacing Chester. We're just moving on. Very, very smart. Second, I cannot possibly imagine the stress, the nerves, the excitement, the fear that Emily Armstrong was feeling. The... The pressure of walking in your shoes is so immense on that woman that I, I can't, I'm surprised she could function. So good for her. It was a pretty small concert, but at the same time, it's live streams. You know that the world is watching and they are waiting for you to fail. I don't think in the meanest of way of wanting her to fail, but waiting to see can she do it? Can she step up to the plate? Can she sing these songs with the emotional intensity necessary for it to really hurt your soul? And, you know, I think that if you're taking all of that into consideration, I can't really fault her performance. She, she didn't reach all of the notes and it's clear that practice and further adjustments will be necessary, both on the band parts and on hers. That's kind of like a duh, right? It's the songs were not written for her. She she needs to. And also, like, we need to remember, she, I don't think she wants it to be like a karaoke session. She wants to embody the song and and have it not make it her own, but put her stamp on it. So it will take adjustments, but I think that's kind of what this smaller 
world tour will be for. I'm excited for, for that aspect. I want to see how much she improves over time. Overall, I think her sound matches the band. Now it just needs like to actually hit the notes, I guess. So, you know, practice makes progress and all of that. So I'm willing to give her time. Now let's talk about the giant Scientology elephant in the room. Oh boy. Up until this point, I think I was very pleasantly surprised seeing the comments that people were being optimistic and happy about this new direction and kind of wishing the best on the band and on Emily. But very quickly, <laughs> There was a turnaround with new information being dug up and it was about Emily Armstrong's involvement with Scientology and specifically Danny Mar Marsteson. Marsteson, I believe that's his name. So first of all, if you don't know what Scientology is, I envy you. The main thing you should know for the purposes of this rant is that Scientology is a religion with a strong celebrity base, their most famous member being Tom Cruise, and they have a pretty strong stance against like psycho psychology and mental health and all of that. As for Danny Marsison, he is mostly known for playing Hyde in that 70s show. He is also a Scientologist and was recently found guilty of raping a bunch of women and was sentenced to 30 years in prison. So yeah. The whole trial was kind of a hot mess and Scientologists allegedly practicing like witness intimidation and stuff by showing up at the court and being very ag aggressively present. So what does that have to do with Emily? Well, it seems she is or was, this part I'm not sure, a Scientologist as well. And she was seen in court supporting Marcison. So people are upset and calling her a rape apologist. Because of the backlash from that, she wrote an Instagram apology <laughs> that was honestly pretty bad because she's trying to have her cake and eat it in that she's trying to keep things very vague for the benefit of, I'm guessing, either the Church of Scientology or for people who have no idea what's going on. Either way, it wasn't great and things further devolved from there with one of Chester's sons calling out Mike Shinoda over the hiring of Emily and his disappointment and anger at the whole thing. So Jamie Bennington, the son, accuses Mike of disrespecting Linkin Park fans and Chester by hiring Emily and also announcing it on Suicide Awareness Month since Chester killed himself. So it's a whole thing <laughs> and people are upset and confused and just yeah. Also it's pretty bad that apparently all the members of Linkin Park and their management seem to be ignoring Jamie Bennington. He's been trying to go to the concerts and he had like, to buy his own ticket you know like it's a bit weird he should be invited but basically on the Linkin Park and management front it's been radio silent regarding this as far as last time I checked could have changed since then but yeah so Jamie Bennington has been aggressively posting on his Instagram stories about all of this being very upset and Linkin Park and their management being completely silent not the greatest look anyway where do I stand you correctly do not ask <laughs> well personally I follow a pretty strict guide of separating church and state so in this case it's the separating the art and the artist. I don't look for role models and celebrities and I don't need them to be good people or have the same values in me, as me, honestly. If the art they create speaks to me and doesn't encourage things I have issues with, then genuinely I don't care. I also find cancel culture really stupid and prevents people from actually growing and evolving. But that's a whole other thing and yeah. Anyway, what about you? Do you agree? or disagree with separating art and artists? And more importantly, what do you think of Linkin Park 2.0? Are you excited, worried, completely disinterested, angry, frustrated, any other adjective? <laughs> Let me know in the comments below. And as always, thank you so very much for watching. Please stay around for non-reaction videos in the future. And 
Yeah, like, subscribe, do all of the things. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.